Good evening and welcome to our Edmonds Adventist Church family update for Friday night. How nice that we are getting very close to the hours of Sabbath. And I am sure that you will enjoy embracing a day of rest and refreshment. It will be coming in just a little over an hour. Sundown's getting earlier now. It was after nine o'clock and now it's getting to be a bit before nine o'clock. And of course, we'll be getting earlier and earlier now. These evenings are absolutely beautiful though, aren't they? And with the clouds, I imagine it'll be a very nice looking sunset tonight. I'm John Brunt, the pastor, and each weeknight at this time, we spend some time getting updates on our members because we want to stay together as a family even though we can't be together physically as a family. And we read a scripture and have prayer together. I have a couple of updates from today. Muriel Martinez had a procedure today. I just talked to her a little bit ago. She's still feeling kind of drowsy. Uh, appreciates the fact that her sister, Karen Silva, uh, picked her up and has taken her home and now will pretty soon take her to her own home as she's getting better. We also want to remember Muriel and Karen's younger sister, Gardenia. She lives over in Othello with her mother and Gardenia has been diagnosed with COVID-19. Right now she's having a lot of chills and not feeling well. We want to pray for her quick recovery. And also, she's living with her mother. And we really want to pray that her mother be spared from getting it from her. So please keep them in your prayers. And I just talked to Al Knight and his wife, Rosita, as you know, has also been diagnosed with COVID. She is doing better. Uh, still somewhat under the weather, but they are hoping that in a week and a half she'll be back at work. So we'll pray that that goes well, continues to go well, and that she continues to recover. Those are the updates that I have from today. I do want to, as the week ends, as, as we did last night as well, review those that we've been praying for over the last couple weeks. You may have some extra time on Sabbath, to be able to remember these people in prayer. Maybe you will know two or three or four that you can especially pick out and pray for over this weekend. So here are some of the people that we have been praying for over the last couple of weeks. Surgeries. As you know, Carol Edholm had a surgery on her hand earlier this week, and we pray that that uh, recovery will be quick and complete. Paul Runnels is looking forward to surgery. It had to be postponed. He's still not sure when it will come, but we pray for him. Uh, Paul Brower had some eye surgery earlier this week, and that is going well. And Bill Davenport is going to be facing some eye surgery on August the 18th, just a few weeks from now. He also needs someone to take him from here over to Bellevue, the hospital where it will be performed. And uh, if any of you are willing to do that, please let me know, uh, Pastor John at edmondsadventist.org. And if you have prayer requests, that's also the email, Pastor John at edmondsadventist.org. COVID concerns, we want to pray for. Cherry Babiuk's family. She has a great grandson, JJ, living with her. He goes to preschool, and one of the workers there at the preschool has tested positive for COVID. So we pray that that will not spread any further. Um, Donald Stock, a friend of Kathy Stewart's, or an acquaintance of Kathy Stewart's, a friend of her son's. Uh, has been exposed to COVID, and we pray that he will be kept safe. Marisol and her husband down in Mexico have also tested positive for COVID-19. So remember them. And then there are a number of people whose adult children are in need of our help. 
Fran Robinson's daughter, Abby, who has suffered from preeclampsia. Fortunately, the baby is doing well. Kathy Stewart's son, Tom. Colleen McIntosh's son. Uh, Mary P's son, Doug, who has had the blood clot in his leg and is still having some pain from that. So please remember him. And then we have several people whose parents are in need of prayer. Cliff Borowitz's father, also Cliff, in Chicago. As I mentioned, I talked to him yesterday. He's doing better, but it has been a long and painful ordeal over the last four months. And they say he still probably has about three months to go. Gilbert Rodriguez's father, back in Orlando, Florida. Jody Bauer's parents, both her father and mother, in a rehab facility down in California, and Wendy Weaver's mom. We also have several that are looking for work. Taya Vargas and Taya has a prospect of a job that she would really love, and so we pray that that will work out. Eileen McCory. We also pray that her roommate will be able to get back here uh, from Kenya. Uh, Karen and Muriel are both looking for work as well. And then there are friends and relatives, uh, Bonnie Parle's friend, Baby Huxley, and her wonderful friend, Jeannie Dalrymple, who is suffering from cancer. Uh, Kathy, Mary Pease's friend, who has suffered from burns. Ray, Mary P's brother-in-law, who's had part of his leg amputated and has an infection. We remember Chuck's little three-year-old relative back in Michigan who is suffering from cancer. The chemo has worked well, but now he has a transplant to look forward to. Uh, and also Chuck's granddaughter, Claire, who had surgery recently. Hylene's uh, friend, a, a young boy named Lem who is still suffering from some health challenges. And then we have several people who have suffered loss. Bonnie Parle's friend, Debbie, who has lost her husband. This is the second time she's been widowed in the last 10 years. Uh, Kathy Stewart's friend, Sharon, who passed away. Uh, Jim and Semi McAdams, loss of brother-in-law, Mickey, over in Indonesia. And Sharon Lang's friend's son in Tennessee. His name is Tim, who passed away this week. We pray that God will be close to them. Paul says he is the God of all comfort, and we pray that God will comfort each one of those who have suffered loss. For our scripture tonight, we're going to continue reading the Sermon on the Mount. We're going to conclude the first of the three chapters in Matthew that make up the Sermon on the Mount tonight. We begin reading with verse 33, and pardon me, 38, and we'll continue reading to the end of the chapter. This is from Jesus' Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5. You have heard that it was said, eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your shirt, hand over your coat as well. If anyone forces you to go one mile, go with them two miles. Give to the one who asks you, and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies, and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes the sun to rise on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Several things that we should notice here. There are two of these antitheses in this section. Uh, 
where Jesus says, you've heard it said, but now I say. The first of those is, you've heard it said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. And that is said in the Old Testament. And the purpose in the Old Testament is to try to limit revenge. You see, it's natural for us, when somebody does something to us, to try to get revenge, but to try to get revenge plus a little more. We not only get even, we get even plus. And so, the law says only an eye for an eye, only a tooth for a tooth. But Jesus says there's a way even better than that. Don't get revenge at all. But instead, show kindness. If somebody tries to take your shirt, give them your coat too. If they try to make you go a mile, and Roman soldiers could do that, they could make you carry their pack for a mile, well, take it too. In other words, show an amazing degree of graciousness because God has been gracious to you. And then the second of these antitheses in this passage we've read tonight has to do with loving your enemy. Jesus says, you have heard it said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Now, nowhere in the Old Testament does it say that. However, we do find that in the Dead Sea Scrolls, the writings that were written by the group of sectarian Jews who lived out by the Dead Sea. And in their writings, it says, love your neighbor, but hate your enemy. Hate those outside of the group. Jesus, <coughs> pardon me, Jesus says no. Love even your enemy. Because that's what God does. He doesn't say, okay, I'm only going to let the sun come to the righteous and uh, the unrighteous will just not let the sun come up on them. He sends his gifts to everyone. He says, if you only love people of your own kind, what good is that? Even the worst of sinners do that. He says, your love should be an inclusive love that loves even your enemy. And then he ends by saying, therefore be perfect as God is perfect. That verse has been misunderstood a lot because Jesus isn't talking about some kind of absolute sinless perfection here. He's talking about the way you love, the inclusiveness of your love. God's love is perfect in that it is inclusive and embraces all. And he's saying that you become perfect by having that inclusive love that embraces all. Luke makes that clear when he gives the same uh, part of Jesus' teaching, and says, Be merciful, as your Father in heaven is merciful. So Jesus calls us to a different kind of love, a love that is inclusive, a love that embraces even the enemy. Let's pray. Lord, we are overwhelmed by your all-inclusive love. We are so grateful that you embrace us and you embrace all of your children. And in doing so, you remind us that all are our brothers and sisters and that as we are touched by your grace, we should be gracious and embrace all. We pray, Lord, that you will give us that gift of love in our lives. Tonight, we want to uplift Muriel, who's had this procedure today, isn't feeling so well right now. And we especially pray for Karen and Muriel's younger sister, Gardenia, over in Othello. Pray that she will recover quickly without complications from COVID. And we pray that her mother, with whom she lives, will not get it. We are grateful that Rosita Knight, Al's wife, is doing better. We pray that she will just continue to improve each day and that in a week and a half she will be able to be back at work. And Lord, you have heard all of the other names that we have mentioned tonight. 
We won't mention them all again, but you've heard them. We have uplifted them before you, and we pray that you will be with each one. And as the wonderful hours of Sabbath come, we pray that we will feel your presence and your love, that we will be refreshed in our souls. We think of Jesus' invitation, Come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And we pray, Lord, for that rest over this Sabbath. As we have gone through this pandemic, it is hard not to feel worry and burdened. It has disrupted our lives. There are so many things we'd like to do that we cannot do. There are many people we'd like to see that we cannot see. We would love to be together and worship again. We miss being able to gather and sing praise to you and see our fellow believers and be encouraged by each other. We miss all of that. We are tempted right now to be weary and burdened down. But we pray that on this Sabbath we will come to you and may we truly receive rest for our souls. In Jesus' name, amen. Tomorrow morning, I hope you'll join us at 10 o'clock here in this same place for our worship serv- our, our Sabbath school service, actually, our uh, Bible study. Tomorrow morning, we'll be looking at the topic of intercessory prayer. And then at 11 o'clock, we will have our worship service. Uh, you won't want to miss it. Uh, Jamie Cahoon will be giving our children's story. Jonathan and Betsy are going to provide our special music. And uh, you, I know, have appreciated uh, Jonathan's saxophone in the past. We look forward to Betsy and Jonathan playing tomorrow morning. And the sermon will be on Proverbs, continuing our series. This is week number three in our series on Proverbs. And tomorrow we're looking at wisdom and integrity. So please join us, 10 a.m. for Bible study, 11 a.m. for the worship service tomorrow morning, and then we'll be back with the next nightly update on Monday evening. Have a wonderful and joyful Sabbath. Good night.